You're listening to the Angry Marks Podcast Network. Well, what did you learn being in the ring with, with somebody like that, Tommy? Like I said, you were very young. You're 18, 19 years old, and you're going against, you know, one of the top three wrestlers of all time. Brother, I mean, it just, that's why, that's why I graduated so fast and picked it up so quick because I got to wrestle with the best of the best, you know. Uh, and Harley Race had a lot to do with that belt getting put on me, you know. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, so, I mean, you take him, I mean, there's different aspects of it. Uh, I mean, that dude with Butcher, I learned a lot from him. Uh, a lot of fire, you had that fire with that Duma. Uh, Harley Race taught me to be a technician. Uh, you know, Jerry Terry taught me how to steal in Tennessee, you know, and that was my big asset. I knew how to steal and I knew how to fire, you know, and that's something they that hadn't never seen in Georgia. They just see, uh, big guys like Dirty Dick Slater, Bob Orton Jr. You know, I used to go to Chattanooga TV for Nick Goulas, and after after uh, TV, we'd go eat lunch at his uh, cousin or somebody's Greek restaurant, and they had a uh, Georgia Championship wrestling on their line. And uh, I used to think, you know, I mean, I'd make the big guy being 18 in wrestling, but I thought if I ever got to go to Georgia, then I'd, then I'd be made. And, and to come to Georgia and have the guys take an interest and teach me, you know, I was a young kid in a man's world, you know. Uh, Absolutely. You know, so, and they took an interest in me, and and uh, they taught me everything I knew, and, and give me everything I got, and, uh, you know, I was yes or no, sir, and I respected it. Until this day, I respect it. And I think uh, this today, wrestling, uh, they need to know some of their roots. I don't care if they respect me or not, but respect me and the pioneer this business for us. You know, that's what I think. This is the Undisputed Wrestling Show. We have the great pleasure of speaking to Tommy Wildfire Rich this evening. Tommy, I'm going to tag into my uh, partner, tag team partner, the bearded wonder himself, Zane Paisley. You're in the ring with Tommy Wildfire Rich. Well, Tommy, thank you so much uh, for coming on uh, this evening with us. I, I had the pleasure of meeting you, oh, it was quite a few years back, probably about 15 years back uh, in Indianapolis, Indiana, at a little uh, a little promotion that was called NWA Indy, um, which has now been replaced by NWA Circle uh, City. But uh, very nice to meet you then, and thank you so much for coming on the show tonight. Well, thank y'all for having me, man. I'm sorry I missed y'all when I was supposed to be there, but you never know. See, y'all just throwing in surprises to the folks, so that's a good thing, too. <laughs> uh, so, you know, tell me, you said a little while ago about working uh, Tennessee, Georgia, Alabama, you know, what was that uh, travel schedule like? Were you on the same loop every week, or did they have you do a bunch of one spots anywhere? Oh, no, sir. That's what it, I mean, when it was territories, you did. Like, like the Georgia Territory, every Monday night we was in Augusta, Georgia, and if it got under three quarters full, we thought something was wrong. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> week in, week out, you know, two weeks a year we was there. Uh, you know, try to do that today. Uh, Tuesday was in Macon, Georgia. When he said we went to Columbus, Georgia, on Thursday, the market wasn't big enough. Uh, so we go to Athens on Thursday, one Thursday, and then we go to Rome on the next Thursday. Then Friday we did the Atlanta City Auditorium. Then Saturday we do Atlanta TV, jump in the car, uh, with the tights on, hit McDonald's drive through and haul butt to, uh, Columbus TV because it was live at two. So you had to haul butt to get there, and then we'd go somewhere and work that night. And then we had Sunday off, and then when they see Sundays would draw, uh, then we did Sundays too, and then they think they could get two shows out of Sunday, they do two shows on Sunday. So we're driving, you know, 10, 12 times a week. Uh, who was your favorite uh, writing partner uh, during those times? My favorite what? Who was your favorite driving partner at that time? Uh... Shoot, I don't know, man. I had, God, I had, I mean, I went with Wahoo, Wahoo was great. Uh, Ricky Markell, I had a lot of fun with him. Uh, I mean, Stan Hansen, he couldn't drive very good because he can't see very well. Right. But, you know, I just, uh, <laughs> you know, so I, I did most of that driving, but, but anyway, I had a license since they took pictures on them. So you know how long it's been since I drove. <laughs> Was was there any uh, of your writing partners that did anything weird or played any crazy music or anything uh, uh, while while you're on the road so often? I would play a few practical jokes. Uh, 
I mean, uh, I don't know nothing I want to get into. I can't, I can't, we was in, we was in Columbus, Ohio, and I told Ollie Anderson, when I was going to Ohio, my wife was pregnant with my first kid, and uh, I told him I wanted a dog, and he said, well, no. He said, you're in a cage match with Buzz. He said, I'll put you on in the middle of the show. I said, well, you do what you want. They got a 10 o'clock flying out, and I'm going to be on it. Well, needless to say, he told me, oh, God, you use that DD word all the time. And boy, you know how I delivered all stuff in mind. He said, if he ain't going to deliver it tonight, I said, well, see what you just said? You said you was there because you delivered all seven years. I don't care on delivering now. I don't see the doctor do it, but I am going to be there. Uh-huh. So anyway, that's the first time I ever bowled up at only. I mean, he was so slap out. Um, anyway, he ended up putting me on the middle of the show, and uh, he's going to put Roddy Piper on last. Roddy got the bus with him, got fired, so he catching TNT and going back to him. So did you make it then? You know, yeah, we made it. Roddy <laughs> Piper did too. Yeah. But, I mean, that's just, uh, you know, I mean, I, I could tell you some crazy stories, but, um, but the Speedy Wrestling Channel, radio show, that's my wife, if anybody wants to know. She was asking me who I was speaking to. She pretty knows it still today. <laughs> Well, tell her we said hello. Um, so, hey, they said hello, baby. <laughs> so hello, she, baby. She said hello. <laughs> you you moved on <laughs> to Memphis and had some wild times there. Uh, that's uh, that's uh, you were uh, kind of helping out Jerry Lawler there, right? Well, I draw him some money. I knew <laughs> I couldn't be a baby. I couldn't be a baby right there because Lawler was stealing the thunder. And he was the booker, so you couldn't get over him. So I, that's where really I switched heel. Cause I knew I could steal the thunder there. And, uh, you know, I can't, there's another story. I kept out of that ring for eight hours. Uh, <laughs> we shaved all his head me in Austin Island. Ain't too many clowns in the that. You know, I just got back from Japan four week tour, had that jet lag. They pushed me out at about five o'clock on the TV car, had an air mattress and a six pack of beer. <laughs> a six pack. Blow the air mattress up. You know? Blow the air mattress up. Drank a beer, went to sleep. Woke up, peed in the can, drank another beer, went to sleep, peed in the can. Next thing I know, I heard a big old loud noise. I jumped up and my head hit them poles in the bottom of the ring. I thought, where in the hell am I? Excuse me. <laughs> anyway, anyway, I was under the ring. Then I realized, you know, where I was in. But yeah, I was under there for about uh, six to eight hours. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Well, in Memphis is where you first met uh, Paul Heyman, right? Yeah, yeah, sure was. Uh, what What were your first impressions of him? Because uh, everything I've read or, and past guests that we've had uh, uh, have differing opinions, and I don't, I don't want to. I want to hear your first impressions down at that time when he was still very, very young. I thought he was a rich, poor kid from the north. It's exactly what I thought. His daddy was a lawyer, and his mama still changed his diaper. And uh, <laughs> that's what I thought. And then I got to know him, you know, he managed just a little bit. And he, he turned out to be pretty cool. But that was that was my first impression, you know. I figured, I figured that uh, his dad paid Lawler uh, some money to use him or something. I didn't know. But... uh he turned out being pretty cool. Yeah. Give me yeah. a job in a, give me a, give me a job in ACW. That was pretty cool. So, uh, you know, that was a dream job. Took the best job I ever had. Well, do people uh, talk to you more about the ECW time as the Big Don right now, or do they talk to you more? Uh, do they do they recognize you as Wildfire? No, the only time they talk to me about being a Big Don is when I go in a pizza place. I go to Papa John's or Pizza Hut. And he asked me how to buy a case. That's about the only time. <laughs> you know, uh, most of the time, most of the time, and he'd been on TV in 20 years, and uh, still, you know, Tommy of Wildfire Ridge, that was, that was the following I had. They still know me. You know, of course, I'm just about quite as pretty as I was then. It's a lot older. <laughs> I just can't move quite as quick. But, uh, you know, I mean, hey, if it wasn't for the Rassin fans out there, brother, Child wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be here. Uh, wouldn't none of us be here. 
You know, so, so hats off to all the wrestling fans out there. God bless you. You never want to. Because I love y'all. Well, I'm going to tag back in uh, the prophet Rick Craig. And we are, once again, this is the Undisputed Wrestling Show. We're speaking live. Hey, can I say with... one thing? Can I say one thing? Oh, uh, I just want to let everybody know that I'm going to be in Commerce, Georgia, at 1 o'clock Saturday for a wrestling revival. It's Saturday night. I'm going to be in Griffin, Georgia, in my church, and we're putting on a wrestling show there. Uh, Bell Times at 7.30. It's in Griffin on the High Falls Road. So any of you folks out there that's in the Griffin area, or if y'all want to make the trip down, come on down and y'all spend the night at my house. Huh. Oh, that's awesome. My wife, what, what my, wife that my, is, wife, my wife don't even cuss. She just said a bad word. But y'all, come on. It's Freddie Miller would say, don't miss it. Be there.